Alison Fregale, Likeable Badass, The New Science of Successful Women. If you're a woman navigating the complex maze of today's workplace, imagine having a roadmap that not only helps you break through the glass ceiling, but also shows you how to reshape the entire structure. The Workplace Paradox for Women. You've probably heard the phrase glass ceiling. It's that invisible barrier that seems to stop women from reaching the top rungs of the corporate ladder. But what if I told you there's more to it than just a ceiling? It's more like a maze, filled with twists and turns that can leave even the most talented women feeling lost and frustrated. Meet Sarah, a brilliant marketing manager. She's smart, hardworking and full of innovative ideas. Yet every time she speaks up in meetings, she notices her male colleague's eyes glazing over. When Tom from accounting suggests the same idea a few minutes later, suddenly everyone's nodding along. Sound familiar? This is the workplace paradox many women face. You're expected to be confident and assertive to get ahead, but when you do, you're often labelled as bossy, or worse, aggressive. It's like being told to cross a river without getting wet, seemingly impossible. Now you might think the solution is simple. Just focus on gaining more power. After all, that's what all those women in leadership programmes are about. But here's the kicker. Power isn't the whole story. It's about status and respect, too. Think about it. When was the last time you heard about a Respect Women in the Workplace Day? We have an equal pay day, but no equal respect day. And while this focus on power isn't wrong, it's missing a crucial piece of the puzzle. That's because power doesn't exist in a vacuum. It's given to you by others. Whether it's a promotion, a raise, or even just having your ideas heard in a meeting, someone else is making that decision, and they're basing it on how much they respect and admire you. In other words, your status. So, while you're working hard to climb that corporate ladder, remember that it's not just about being powerful. It's about being respected. It's about changing perceptions and breaking down stereotypes. It's about being seen as both competent and likeable. A tricky balance, but not an impossible one. The good news is that you're not alone in this journey. Women everywhere are facing these challenges and finding ways to overcome them. By understanding this paradox, you're already one step ahead. In the coming chapters, we'll explore strategies to navigate this maze, build your status and claim the success you deserve, all while staying true to yourself. Remember, you're not just climbing a ladder, you're reshaping the very structure of the workplace. And that is a challenge worth taking on. Understanding the game. Imagine you've just stepped onto a playing field, but instead of a ball or racket, your tools are your skills, personality and ambition. Welcome to the workplace game, where the rules aren't always clear and the playing field isn't always level. But don't worry, with the right mindset and strategies, you can become a master player. Meet Zara, a brilliant project manager. She'd always delivered results, yet she felt stuck in her career. One day she decided to approach her work differently, not just as tasks to complete, but as a game to master. She started observing her colleagues, especially those who seemed to climb the corporate ladder effortlessly. She noticed how successful people in her organisation behaved, taking note of what language they used and how they handled conflicts or challenges. These observations became her guidebook to the game. Think of your workplace as a stage where every interaction is a performance. Your colleagues and superiors are your audience, forming opinions about you with each move you make. Are you seen as confident, approachable, a team player, a leader? Now, here's where it gets tricky for women. The traits often associated with leadership, assertiveness, decisiveness, confidence can be perceived negatively when displayed by women. It's like walking a tightrope between being seen as competent and being liked. But here's the good news. You can learn to navigate this game with a playful attitude. Yes, playful. Because while the challenges are real and sometimes frustrating, approaching them with a sense of strategy and even fun can make all the difference. When Maria, a marketing executive, noticed her ideas were often overlooked in meetings instead of getting discouraged, she started building alliances before meetings. 
Sharing her thoughts one-on-one -on -one with key stakeholders ahead of time meant she had a chorus of support behind her ideas when they came up. Ultimately, you're not trying to beat anyone at this game, especially not other women. The goal is to overcome barriers and create wins that lift everyone up. The game isn't just about your skills or your work ethic. It's about relationships, influence and how you present yourself. It's about understanding the unwritten rules of your workplace culture and learning to work with them, or better yet, to change them from within. Mastering assertiveness without aggression. Have you ever watched a colleague effortlessly command a room, leaving everyone impressed but not intimidated? That's the art of assertiveness without aggression, and it's a key skill for any woman aiming to thrive in the workplace. Let's start with a simple truth. Likeable badasses, or those women who seem to have it all figured out, aren't born. They're made. They've discovered effective, authentic ways to shape how others perceive them. Sometimes they don't even realise what they're doing or why it works, but we're going to unpack this skill so you can master it too. Meet Yuki, a talented software developer. In team meetings, she used to struggle with being heard. Her ideas were solid, but her soft-spoken nature meant they often got lost in the noise. Yuki decided to change her approach. She started prefacing her ideas with confident phrases like, I've given this a lot of thought and here's what I propose. Suddenly, people were listening. The key to Yuki's success wasn't speaking more loudly or more often. It was about changing how she presented her ideas. She learned to be assertive without being aggressive, confident without being domineering. Now you might be thinking that this is far easier said than done, and you're right. It's a delicate balance, especially for women. Society often labels assertive women as bossy or aggressive, while men exhibiting the same behaviour are seen as strong leaders. So start by paying attention to your body language. Stand tall, make eye contact, and use deliberate hand gestures. These non-verbal cues signal confidence without saying a word. Next, focus on your language. Use I statements to own your opinions. Instead of saying, maybe we could try this, use the more direct, I recommend that we try this. It's a subtle shift, but it can make a world of difference in how your ideas are received. Layla, a marketing manager, always seemed to get her point across without ruffling feathers. Her secret was in how she framed disagreements. Instead of telling someone they were wrong, she'd simply say, I see it differently. She asserted her view while leaving room for dialogue. As you practice these techniques, you'll find your own style of assertiveness. You'll become more comfortable expressing your ideas, standing your ground and influencing others. And the best part, you'll do it while staying true to yourself. And remember that every interaction is an opportunity to refine your skills. So go ahead, speak up in that next meeting. Your voice deserves to be heard. Craft your professional narrative. Every successful professional has a story. It's not just about what you've done, but how you talk about it. Your professional narrative is your personal brand, and it's one of the most powerful tools you have for building status and advancing your career. Your story is everywhere. In casual conversations, emails, social media profiles, your resume and more. Each of these is an opportunity to shape how others perceive you. The key is to craft a narrative that showcases both your competence and your warmth. This balance is crucial for women in the workplace. Think about the last time you updated your professional bio. Did you downplay your achievements out of modesty? Many women do. But remember, if you don't tell a compelling story about yourself, no one else will. It's not bragging. It's strategic self-promotion. Consider May a project manager who struggled with self-promotion. She started small, sharing brief updates about her team's successes in meetings. Gradually, she became more comfortable highlighting her own contributions. Her colleagues began to see her not just as a team player, but as a leader. When crafting your narrative, focus on specific stories that carry real impact. Instead of saying you're a problem solver, share an anecdote about a complex issue you resolved. Be concrete about the value you bring. Did you increase efficiency by 20%? Did you lead a project that boosted revenue? 
These details make your story memorable and compelling. Remember your narrative isn't static. It evolves as you grow professionally. Regularly update your story to reflect new skills, achievements and experiences. This doesn't mean constantly talking about yourself, but rather being prepared to articulate your value when opportunities arise. Sophia, a marketing executive, made it a habit to keep a running list of her accomplishments. This made it easy for her to update her resume, contribute to team newsletters, or speak confidently in performance reviews. Her proactive approach to managing her narrative paid off in faster career advancement. So take a moment to reflect on your professional journey. What unique value do you bring? What challenges have you overcome? What are you most proud of? These are the building blocks of your narrative. Use them wisely and watch your story reveal new career horizons. Cultivating allies and changing the system. Statistics don't lie. Women are still underrepresented in top positions in leadership and lag far behind their male counterparts in compensation and status. But this could change rapidly if every woman in the workplace had a powerful network of allies and mentors supporting her growth. This isn't just a dream. It's a goal we can all work toward for both ourselves and others. Let's start with a truth that might surprise you. Mentorship isn't just for beginners. Think about top athletes. They don't outgrow their coaches as they improve. They invest more in coaching. The same principle applies in your career. No matter how far you've come, you can always benefit from guidance and support. Priya is a mid-level manager who thought she was too experienced for mentorship. She was doing well but felt stuck. On a colleague's advice, she joined a mentoring programme. To her surprise, her mentor helped her see blind spots in her leadership style and strategise for her next big career move. Priya's career took off in ways she hadn't imagined possible. Unfortunately, quality mentorship is often harder to come by for women and people of colour. This is one of the hidden barriers to advancement that we need to address. Studies show that formal mentoring programmes can significantly boost the representation of underrepresented groups in management. Yet many women report never having had a formal mentor. This is where you come in. Not only should you seek out mentorship for yourself, but you can also become a mentor to others. Remember, you have valuable experiences and insights to share, no matter where you are in your career. When seeking or offering mentorship, focus on key areas like career planning and authentic self-promotion. These skills are crucial for building your status and achieving your goals. A good mentor can help you craft your professional narrative, navigate office politics and build your confidence. Now, let's talk about developing allies. Your network is your net worth, as the saying goes. Cultivate relationships across all levels of your organisation. Offer help freely, celebrate others' successes, and don't be afraid to ask for support when you need it. Take inspiration from Mia, a sales director who made it a point to connect with colleagues in different departments. When a cross-functional leadership role opened up, Mia's diverse network of allies advocated for her, helping her secure the position. So, seek out mentors, be a mentor, build your network of allies and always be ready to lend a hand to others. This grassroots effort in workplaces means that everyone has the support they need to thrive. Your journey to the top doesn't have to be lonely because the view is always better when it's shared.